continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington. James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Elizabeth Walker as Carolyn Russell. And also starring Barbara Rush as Marsha Russell. Susan Winter has gambled and lost. She invited an attractive young girl, Jill Smith, into her home as secretary for her husband, the Reverend Tom Winter. She wanted to tempt her husband, to prove to him that he was fallible, that he was unworthy of serving God. She did tempt her husband. She also lost him. Hi. Welcome back. I don't know what the etiquette is in a situation like this. Do I kiss you, or do we shake hands? What do you want, Susan? You know, after you left me, I, I became very ill. Not near death or anything like that, but I didn't feel too much like living. I'm sorry I wasn't here. I'm, uh, I'm glad you're feeling better. I do. I feel much better. I haven't had a drink in, in three days. You should be very proud of me. It's a new record. Good news. You know, when I didn't see you for a while or hear from you, I began to feel abandoned and rejected and unloved. And then you'll go along with the divorce. Divorce? Yeah. Tom, I don't want a divorce. I mean, if you insist, I'll have no choice, but, well, I thought we could agree to try again. Susan, I've resigned from the ministry. I know, and that's what I wanted. I, I won't walk away from you now. Don't you see? There's nothing left. I want you to come back home. I know you've left me and went to another woman, but I don't care. It doesn't matter. I just want you home now more than anything else in the world. Oh, Susan, please listen to me. I'm trying to make you understand. I am of no value to you as a husband. None whatsoever. I have nothing to give you for any of us. Nothing. But I don't believe that. I don't believe you don't have anything else left to give me. I won't believe it. <sighs> Tom, if you don't... if you don't come back to me... I'll start divorce proceedings. Well, what I tell the hearing about Jill Smith will hurt her so much that she will never be able to have custody of her child. I really will tell them. I'll tell them how... how I begged you to give her a job, how she abused my kindness, exploited her position, how she set out deliberately to to break us up just for the fun of it. How she neglected her baby to throw herself at you. How she cost you your ministry and your career and my health and above all. How she cost us our marriage. Well, Tom, you're going to force me to say all that if you don't come back. Do what you want to do, Susan. Whatever makes you happy.
All right, everybody, that's good night. Hey, I was just starting to move. Can I help it if you're a slow starter? Hey, I got about another hour in me. Uh, can I go somewhere else? I was just on my way home. Well, uh, Benji's is still open, and they've got a band that really makes it happen. They're a blast. Well, come on. I can't. Really. Well, you're a better man than I am, Gunga Din. Well, I can't cut that scene anyway when there's no other place to go. Later. You were really wailing out there. I didn't know that you could bought at the house and play at the same time. The drummer told me. You want a piece of friendly advice? How friendly? You're wasting your bait. You've already got Dennis hooked. All you have to do now is reel him in. I like Dennis. He's at Benji's. I wasn't in the mood for that. What are you in the mood for? Something that I've never done before. What changed your mind? Does it matter? Depends. On what? On how long are you going to stay this time? A couple of nights ago, you didn't even finish the dance we started. I couldn't say. And now? I'd like to go for a long drive. Far away from everything and everybody. I tried to pick a fight with the Reverend, and I'd have smashed his face if he'd have fought me back. What do you do with a guy who won't fight back no matter what, huh? Joe, I could care less what you do. Look, did it ever occur to you why you pick a fight with a guy like that? Oh, come on, you know why. You know what he did to Joe. Well, what does that have to do with you? Well, somebody's got to do something. Why? Oh, come on, why? What do you think? I should sit around and let it happen, let the good old Reverend get away with it, huh? You're asking me to believe that you suddenly, after all this time, feel responsible for what happens to Jill? Come on, you don't care what happens to her, do you? Oh, look, I'm not asking you to believe anything, brother. But you don't feel responsible for Jill. No, I don't feel responsible. You just feel like going around picking fights, huh? Yeah. Well, the next time you feel like punching an old man out like Eddie Jacks or beating up on a reverend or something, don't bother to tell me about it. It's just a waste of energy. Let me set you straight about something, will you? You just forget about Jill Smith, all right? Because I'm going to find some nice young guy that will help her out. You know, there's a lot of residents at the hospital who would like to give her a normal, decent life, all right? The point is, you just don't have to keep going around punching out guys, see? Forget about that. 
I mean, as far as telling me about how much you hate her and she hates you and all that. Believe me, it's beginning to get a bore. I've heard all that, you know? Yeah, so you're gonna fix her up with one of your nice, clean-cut young residents, huh? Well, that's a nice sound idea, isn't it? I mean, she needs a husband, the baby needs a father. Bingo, he takes over and you're off the hook. Oh, you think I couldn't, huh? You think I couldn't take care of him? <laughs> Maybe she wouldn't let me. In fact, I know she wouldn't let me because she doesn't think I'm good enough. Look at old Reverend. They used to be Reverend. That's the kind of guy she needs, a guy she can look up to, not me. Oh, sure, I used to con her. I used to con her all the time, in fact, and she used to think I was just great. Really great. And I made a lot of promises that I didn't keep. Oh, not wild ones, the, the simple ones, the ones I could handle. The ABC kind. Like wearing a nice suit of clothes and, and preparing myself for a nice job. All that establishment stuff. Well, maybe she was right about me. I got nothing to offer except the nickels and dimes in my pocket. No prospects. Nothing going for me. That's all. Joe, will you admit something to me just once? Admit that you care about Jill and the baby. Your baby. Admit it just once that you still care, huh? Can you do that? <laughs> 